Welcome to Northlandia, a place to bring your curiosity because here you'll find curiosities. I'm Wyatt Buckner with the Duluth News Tribune, and I'll be your guide as we discover the unique and fascinating stories here in the Northland. Here we celebrate the region's distinctive people, places, and history. In this episode, we visit Great Lakes Candy Kitchen, where turtles are for eating and bears are for hugging. Let's venture forth into Northlandia. It's a busy summer day at a Knife River candy store. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Oh, at a 40? Okay, it's all set? I think so. Okay, sounds good. We got that candy too? Yep. All right. Customers coming in and out of the shop, while more treats are being made fresh in the back. Stepping outside with your purchased treats, you may be tempted to walk along the candy shop's bear trail. To tell us more about this North Shore candy store, I'm joined again by arts entertainment reporter Jay Gabler. Jay, welcome to episode 25 of Northlandia. Happy to be here. So, Jay... How did you discover this store, and what prompted you to look into it for Northlandia? Because you and I just discussed right before recording this that we hadn't heard of this candy shop before. No, I, I had not, and boy, I, I've been missing out because this is a beloved community institution in Knife River, and it's connected to another beloved uh, community institution in the city of Virginia. But anyway, yeah, so we um, knew that uh, the artist Patricia Canelake, who's a member of the family that runs this store, is a painter and had an exhibit in Duluth. And so we were hearing about that, knowing that was coming up, and a reader actually wrote in saying, you know, she's such a cool person. She is a you know, gifted artist, and then also her family has this candy store, and she'll like you work on her art during the day, and then she'll make candy all night long. And and our editor, Katie, was like, you know, that would be a great Northlandia. And I then, you know, there's the whole bear trail situation that, you know, that I learned about. And so, yeah, once all that fell into place, I was like, oh, we've got to we got to try to get there. Mm -hmm. We'll work our way to the, the bear trail. But for now, let's start with the, the Cane Lake family. As you mentioned, they, they have a bit of a history in the Northland, it's particularly in the candy world. Huge history. So they are now on the fourth generation of this family making candy. And it goes back to 1905 when Gust Cane Lake, who is the grandfather of Patricia Cane Lake and the great-grandfather of Andy Matson, another of the uh, proprietors of the current Great Lakes Candy Kitchen. Anyway, he, uh, along with some family, immigrated from Greece and opened Cane Lakes Candies, which is a shop that is still open to this day in the city of Virginia. And then that shop was passed down to his son, John. And then along come Patricia, her twin sister, Pamela, and their brothers. And Patricia Cane Lake, uh, when we visited, shared her memories of growing up in a Iron Range candy family. When we were really little, we my dad would bring home little treats at night. And then during the holidays, uh, we would go into the store and help make candy canes on a huge table and stretch the taffy off a big hook and roll them and put the stripe in there. So that's some of our earlier memories. I did have a, a memory when we were a little bit older, we'd go on a field trip, it was like upper grade school, and for some reason my dad would give us a big block of chocolate, which nobody had seen anything like that before, and we would pass it around the bus and every kid would take a bite out of it. Is that in Virginia, though? Yeah, we were touring the taconite mines. So we got little taconite pellets, and then we passed the chocolate around. Yes, Patricia and her sister and their siblings grew up in this candy family. But their dad always said, Patricia told me, that he didn't expect to hand down the candy store, that it was hard work, and he didn't want his kids to have to work this hard just because it was a family candy store. So the plan was not to hand down the candy store, and he actually sold the candy store to another owner who maintained the name and the recipes and ran it, but wasn't you know in the family. So yeah, by the time Patricia Cane Lake was you know full grown adult in her own, you know, professional uh, professional life, along with her siblings, the candy store had been sold. So by 2007, then, the Cane Lake family didn't operate any candy stores in Minnesota. So how did they decide to open one in Knife River? So it turns out that you can take the kids out of the candy store, but you can't take the candy store out of the kids. Patricia explained to me how her sister ended up sort of leading the move to reopen a Cane Lake family candy store in some way, and perhaps on the North Shore, where the sisters had been spending time. Pamela Matson, Pamela, Pamela Matson. Cane Lake Matson, yeah. Okay. She's the one who actually um, was a big instigator. She started making fudge with my dad, and she would sell it at the co-op up the shore, and 
and she worked at the library and I was teaching in St. Paul and we just said, Pamela needs a candy store. And I even said, it's got to look like Mel's Fish. I love the red and white. My dad's store was red and white in Virginia, Minnesota. And we found this building because we knew a fisherman that knew this was for sale, so we hopped on it. Even Andy Matson, who is Patricia's nephew, uh, remembers that as a kid, he didn't think that, you know, candy was gonna go back to being the family business. I don't feel like any of us really ever thought that we'd be getting into the candy business. Like my mom and my dad and my aunt all had completely different, different careers, you know? And then no one really was like, oh, when we grow, you know, when we we're going to get into this candy store, like it just kind of happened. And um, it was, you know, my my folks and my aunt just really were like, no, let's they were let's do it. And then I'm like, OK, that, that sounds good. And so it, it's been exciting to see it kind of develop. Yeah, so Andy is now one of the co-owners of the candy shop, along with his parents and his aunt. So the four of them run the Great Lakes Candy Kitchen. Yes, that is a play on their name, Cane Lake in Knife River. So before we, we step outside and, and take a journey down the bear trail, let's talk about our experience visiting the candy store. You mean photographer Jed Carlson uh, went up there and got the tour of the candy shop. We walked in right during a, a, a sudden burst of uh, busy customers. Uh, and they just kind of kept coming, coming and coming the entire time that, that we were there. Uh, talk about uh, what your experience was. Uh, visiting the candy shop. Yeah, I thought I can't believe I have not heard of this place because it was obviously very popular with customers. There's a steady stream during the whole time we were there reporting. And also there's a steady stream of people behind the counter in the back of the shop where they make the candy on site. And there were several people who were working in various capacities making candy because they move enough quantity that they just need to be making candy. They make it all day and then Patricia Kane Lake makes it, you know, all night until she goes to bed. And so they are constantly working to meet that customer demand. It was very happy be a uh, busy joyful place mm -hmm. I have and to, it smelled amazing it did i have to say this was a it was a very rough day to be on a diet uh <laughs> visiting that store everything smelled delicious everything looked delicious it was it was a hard day for me but it was a delicious looking day <laughs> yeah and then well fortunately or unfortunately we did have to get out of the store because part of what brought us there was the bear trail yeah so what exactly is the bear trail because as you mentioned uh this is as cool as the candy store is, we probably wouldn't be visiting it for Northlandia specifically if it wasn't for the Bear Trail. That's kind of what makes it push over the edge into the unique curiosity. So talk to me about the Bear Trail. Yeah, so the Bear Trail is what you might call a roadside attraction. It is on the candy store ground, so it is part of the candy store, but it also has its own character or characters, should I say, because it is a trail through the woods populated with well over a dozen bears and owls and other woodland creatures that, well, there are some actual woodland creatures back there, but the more conspicuous ones are painted creatures and scales varying from tiny and cute to significantly taller than I am at 6'4". All sorts of bears and other creatures that have been painted on wood by Patricia Kane Lake using her skills as an artist. And as an artist, she has made these very distinctive. These aren't your just ordinary, cheesy, someone who doesn't know how to paint did their best on a piece of plywood. I mean, Patricia Kane Lake really knows how to create a vivid character. And these are happy bears for the most part. A couple of them are, you know, growling a little bit. But for the most part, they're very happy, joyful bears. But they have a real intensity to them. The colors, the expression, the wideness of their smiles. You've never seen bears quite like this, and they are all over the bear trail. We have a nice yard here. We, we really appreciated the building we got, but it was very small. We had to add additions to push out the kitchen and the storage. And then we started thinking about the yard because there was one little picnic table there. And we thought, um, my sister came up with the idea of of doing a kind of a lollipop trail. And I thought, mm, let's do bears because bear trails are very Northern Minnesota. And our parents collected little bears, stuffed bears. They were kind of loved things all over the house. And so we started as a bear trail and added things we liked, sunflowers, carameled apples. Uh, mostly it's bears. There's friendly bears and hug a bear and scary bears. We had that lot back there and it was just like, there wasn't much going on, like, but then we kind of kept maybe putting like, like a picnic table back there or a couple chairs and then all of a sudden like my mom and my aunt, they're, they're really good about like, well, let's paint a bear and like, let's put it back there. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, let's paint three more, you know, or like, let's do some more and keep putting them back and then keep making a trail. And I feel like it's a good, you know, it's, it was a good thing. And then the, the kids can run and burn off some energy, you know, and then 
then they can come back in and, you know, get some more candy or whatever they want. Yeah, I thought the trail was uh, was pretty cool. Uh, I wish there were some kids running around when we were there. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see any kids interacting, but we did see a couple, uh, a group of, uh, uh, of adults walking the trail and having some laughs. They had a, a standing cardboard cutout that they could put their faces in and saw them take some photos. I think I, I saw uh, photographer Jed walk up and talk to them for, for a little while there. That was We didn't see any kids interacting there, but even we saw some adults walking the, the trail. Yeah, it does really feel like a magical place. And Andy was telling us that they are about 50-50 sort of, you know, repeat customers and new customers. And I can see where it can be a kind of place where once you've stopped there, you you want to go back. Um, it, it makes an impression. The candy is delicious. We were able to sample it. Um, so I can see where you get customer loyalty because it feels like a, the, a kind of a magical little place that you wouldn't encounter just anywhere. Mm -hmm. Especially if they keep adding, in addition to new and different candies, they also will occasionally add a new bear out there or a new element to the trail out there. They even have uh, interactive pieces as well, like they have signs for hug a bear, and then they also have these little bells with the sign that says scare the bear, so you can ring the bells. Again, it would have been great to have some kids out there ringing the bells while we were there, but it's just that's that's cool that that's there. When we were there and walking the trail ourselves, getting video and, and talking with uh, Patricia, what was going through my head, this, this kind of made me, reminded me of, what I imagined Fairyland Park would kind of be like a little bit in terms of walking that trail uh, with the, the sculptures out there and such. But these were cut out bare. So it just kind of gave me that. I just imagine this just came that feeling of like, that's what I feel like it kind of would feel like a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. It does feel like a vintage roadside attraction. And yeah, we should clarify. It's it's not huge, right? It's, like, no, it's a no. cute little path through the woods, but it's not like you need to like, you know, budget a day to, oh, you no. know, explore all of the bear trail. You can get through it pretty quick, but uh, it's definitely worth stopping to see. Mm-hmm. So even though this is a new shop with new generations, with a new attraction to boot, it sounds like they're keeping the Cane Lake Candy legacy alive, but in new and different ways. Yeah, totally. And now I need to get up to Virginia, obviously, to visit the original Cane Lakes candies, because I hear they have some distinctive elements up there, as well as occasionally animatronics, which uh, you need say nothing else to pique <laughs> my interest. But that's another, that's another whole episode of Northlandia or something. But yeah, just a, you know, the Knife River shop is definitely keeping the family legacy and the family legacy alive. Uh, Andy Matson told us about what he learned from his grandfather. You know, my grandfather always said, he goes, just be, you know, be consistent with your recipes and always use the best quality ingredients you can get. Don't skimp on anything and just keep it consistent. You know, like here's the recipe, use it just keep making it people like it keep making it you know and we're like okay so um and then we use you know we use the copper kettles and um you know we try to do new things new candies and then we try them out and it's you know fun and i think we haven't mentioned this yet but they actually went back and reacquired the the cane lakes candy shop up in virginia so now it's kind of come back full circle beyond just them opening a shop in knife river yeah it's really neat that they the family now runs both shops again but i appreciate their attitude towards it, which is that, you know, they love the tradition, but, you know, they're not religious, so to speak, about it necessarily always having to be in the family. They understand that, you know, it, the Virginia shop was owned by another guy who, by all accounts, just did a wonderful job with it for decades until he retired in 2018 and sold the shop back to the family. So, you know, they've seen evidence that this doesn't necessarily need to be a blood descendant of Gust Cane Lake to keep this tradition alive in the Northland. For me and my sister, we talk about it often, the legacy, that there's a story here and that we want to perpetuate it. So even if another Cane Lake or Matson doesn't own it later, we do want to perpetuate the recipes and maybe the bear trail and the look of everything, that it's, it's unique. It's not anything that became a corporate thing or a chain. It's just came from our grandfather and our fathers. So we like that a lot. And uh, we often think they're looking down on us. All right, Jay, before we wrap it up here, because it's a candy store, I feel obligated to ask about what are some of your favorite candies at these kinds of candy stores? Are there anything that was jumping out at you? Yeah, you know, people often think that I don't have a sweet tooth because they never see me eating sweets or candy. <laughs> but the reason is I, I have too much of a sweet tooth. Once I start, you know, I can't. Uh, I can't oh, I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah, I can't stop. So I was glad to have an excuse, you know, purely for professional reasons. 
you have to you know sample the wares so you can you can write about <laughs> them and uh, one of the one of the things i tried was a concoction called a cherry smash it is chocolate on the outside soft cherry filling on the inside it's like foamy it's not gooey it the consistency was incredible i could have one of those every day for the rest of my life oh wow <laughs> but you know I'm, i just the the classic chocolate mm -hmm. stuff is all so great you know i grew up eating like chocolate bunnies at easter and they mm -hmm. have chocolate squirrels at great lakes candy kitchen they have you know all the classics they the turtles the fudge you know whatever uh, whatever your sweet tooth is they can meet it there and it's it's neat that it's all made on site minnesota does have some giant candy stores including one in the northland that might be another northlandia because they've got a hot mm -hmm. air balloon but we won't oh, you wow. know we, we don't need to yeah that's that's that yet another another story you know but it's, it's one thing to have uh and i don't know they don't that they may have some you know homemade ca chocolate too but there are candy stores that have a lot of imported chocolate including okay try the british chocolate try this you know historic mm -hmm. chocolate this whatever whatever um but to have a just old school candy store like you know great lakes candy kitchen where you know that that candy you're eating was made in the back room maybe a day or two ago that's that's cool mm -hmm. i purposely try not to look too closely at their at what specific candies they had because i was again trying <laughs> it was a hard day to be on a diet uh but i'm a sucker for anything peanut butter if it's got peanut butter you you, you got me I'm, I'm i'm gonna take it <laughs> all right jay well thank you so much for for bringing this to us uh so excited to have you back here again yeah thanks wyatt see you next time and thank you for joining us in this venture into northlandia to read the article for this week's column, as well as see photos by photographer Jed Carlson and video produced by myself, visit DuluthNewsTribune.com slash topics slash Northlandia. You can find all the episodes of Northlandia on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you or someone you know has a unique story that you believe can have a place here in Northlandia, let us know by emailing Northlandia at DuluthNews.com. Join us again next week and discover the extraordinary stories that you just might miss if you're on the right place at the right time, ready to step off the bean path with no rush to return here in Northlandia.